Hello everyone and welcome to another Tech Tip Tuesday. Today's Tech Tip, we'll be going over how to use the options file in conjunction with your network licenses to further control exactly how those licenses will be distributed and even make sure that inactive licenses are automatically dispersed back into the pool. Now for those of you that may not be familiar yet with what network licenses are, essentially they allow the SOLIDWORKS licenses to be centralized on a server computer where all the user computers will be connected to. The way that the users are able to pull those licenses is when they open up a SOLIDWORKS program, whether that be something like SOLIDWORKS Professional, SOLIDWORKS PDM, SOLIDWORKS Composer, etc. Once those programs are open, the computer connects directly to the server computer to pull that license and ensure that a license is available from the pool in order to be distributed onto the user computer. This method of licensing works great for companies that have multiple users and computers across different locations, or if the users don't need to necessarily have certain products activated at all times. However, with the network license setup, there may be times when you're locked out of using a certain SOLIDWORKS product due to the fact that all available licenses are currently being taken up by other users. Now in those types of situations, there may even be cases where those licenses are being used up by inactive computers or by users that simply don't realize that they have a certain product activated on their computer. So this can lead to problems related to production downtime and a drop in work efficiency, especially if there are users that need to use certain licenses but are not able to do so due to these types of situations. So a great way to tackle this problem is through the use of the options file in the Solid Network License Manager program to set up a series of rules that control exactly how those licenses are distributed throughout the network. So let's take a look at exactly how we can go about setting this up. The first step before creating the options file is to first schedule a time within your company where all SOLIDWORKS users will be locked off and not actively using any of the licenses. So a common scenario for this time frame would be to have it during lunch or after hours. The second step is to determine which computers are hosting the network licenses and also what products are associated with each of those licenses. In order to quickly determine this information, you can use the Solid Network License Manager program and head up first over to the Server List tab. Once you click on this tab, it'll show you all the computers that are currently active and are hosting the network licenses. And then to find out the products that are associated, you can head on over to the Server Administration tab, click on the Modify button, and select the Show Activated Product License Information option. Once you've done this, you'll see a window that will list all of the associated SOLIDWORKS products with that specific computer. Now that you've completed the necessary steps, you can then begin the options file setup. So to do this, we're going to head on over to the server computer, open up the Solid Network License Manager program, and we're going to select the Modify button under the Server Administration tab. Following that, we're going to select the Activate slash Reactivate option, and then click on the Next button. So this will open up the server information window and we can see the options file checkbox right below. So to create the options file, we simply have to select the edit button and the Solid Network License Manager program will ask us whether we'd like to create a new file. We'll select yes to open up a new notepad document and here exactly where we can start typing in what we want to put in for the specific functions that will be set up. There are many different functions that we can use, but we'll just go through two of the most common functions that can be implemented. The first function is the timeout function, which can control exactly how long a computer will be allowed to hold on to a specific license once the program detects that the computer is inactive. The timeout value that can be used is any number of seconds that are between 15 minutes to two hours. And a specific product such as SOLIDWORKS PDM, Composer, SOLIDWORKS Inspection, those can be defined as the license to be uh, set up within the timeout function. So an example of a timeout function to release a PDM CAD editor license after 20 minutes will be to type in timeout SWE PDM underscore CAD editor and web and then 900 to define the number of seconds. 
I can also use the timeout all function if I wanted to make sure that any product that is inactive for over 1200 seconds is going to be automatically reverted back into the pool. Another function that can be used is to only allow certain Windows users to access certain SOLIDWORKS products from the network pool. You can set up a group and define all associated Windows users in that group by their Windows usernames. Then you can use the include or exclude functions to either allow access or block those groups or even specific users in that group from taking certain licenses. Let's imagine a scenario where we have a group of users that will all have access to SOLIDWORKS Professional with the exception of one user in the group. So to set this up, I can start by typing in group to create my group and then I'll have to give a name for my group. In this case, I'm going to call it SWPro underscore group. Finally, I'm going to need to add in all the Windows users I want to link to that specific group. Now that I've set that up, I can go into my include function to make sure that all of these users in the group can have access to SOLIDWORKS Professional. So I'm going to type in include SW Office Pro group SW Pro underscore group. Next, I'm going to type in my exclude function, followed by SW Office Pro. And I'm going to tell SOLIDWORKS to exclude the user John Smith from being able to use the professional license from the network. So you can continue down the list of available different features, depending on the amount of different rules that you want to set up. And once you have all of them, you can now save them and close the file in order to confirm. Following that, we're going to just continue through the rest of the activation process to complete it. Once everything's all set up, you can then test out your new options file by running a number of test scenarios to ensure that it's functioning as intended. So with these available options and much more, the network license distribution can now be modified to best fit your company needs and help prevent production downtime and boost efficiency. For a full list of different option file terms and functions, you can refer to the links down in the description for more information. That's it for today's Tech Tip Tuesday, and we'll see you in the next one.